Hello everyone. Um, I just want to show you how to uh, create a simple dipole antenna in FECO and then um, calculate and visualize the fields. So what we're going to do is, well, firstly you're going to look for FECO on the computer and open it and you should see something that looks like this. That launches the, well, that contains the various um, components or utilities that's part of the FECO suite. The ones we will be using is CAD FECO that we use to draw the geometry and set up the problem and post FECO which we, we use for visualization um, of the results. So let's open CAD FECO, we click on this, this opens. All right. Um, now you should see something that looks like that so you can create a new model there we go nice and clean model so the first thing um yeah let's create a hertzian dipole um and then and then we look at uh, at the fields we define some request some fields and visualize it in in post so the first thing is um the this we need to add a source this is located here on the source or load tab and, and then it's obviously an ideal source. Um, so we can define here the electrical dipole. There's also magnetic dipoles. There's um, and then there's other types of sources. So these ones over here, these are sources on ports. Um, we'll maybe look at uh, at what something like that looks like now. But let's create the electric uh, Hertzian dipole. So this is this one over there. And then you should see. Uh, a dialog that pops up like this and if you zoom in here well then we see at the center of our coordinate axis Z, X and Y is located our little dipole, our Hertzian dipole and you can set its properties now here in the dialog box so what we're interested in is the magnitude of the current, this is some per meter so let's make it a 1, it's got a 0 degree phase and the position is at 0, 0 no orientation, it's just directed vertically up along the uh, z-axis. You can call it anything you want. You can call it Hertzian dipole. This isn't so needed in this case. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference in this case. But nonetheless, it's always nice to, to name things properly. Okay, so we create it over there. There's my little di uh, Hertzian dipole. Now we are going to go to the request tab as I show you over here. Now you can request various things, the one uh, various um, yeah, uh, parameters as you would. So here is for example the far field. I want to calculate the far field uh, with the coordinate axis situated here at the origin. Remember this is our coordinate axis. This is our convention for the theta angle and the phi angle. And we are going to specify our field points there we, where we want to calculate our electric far field or our, our not just electric, our electromagnetic far field in terms of spherical coordinates. So make sure this is the system we choose. And um, then we are going, then you can, well, you can say where the field point should start. Uh, we're just going to start at zero. And then we're going to make use of this already it's almost like a default setting for a 3D pattern. So we create it like this and we zoom in a bit. So to pan, you press control and you press the left mat uh, button of the mouse and then you can drag the geometry around here. To zoom, you just use the middle mouse wheel to roll it up and down and then you can, you can zoom in and out. Okay, so these are our field points. The increments between these individual points here is 5 degrees, so sometimes that's quite coarse. Uh, so what I like to do is I typically like to make it a, a 1 degree. And in most problems, it doesn't matter, it'll run f sufficiently fast enough. But um, you can also set it perhaps to 2 degrees. You can change the grid as you wish. And just at, at 5 degrees, you run the risk of of, uh, of sometimes missing some of the key features if you have a very big antenna with. But this is now, a, we expect a smooth, almost like a dipole, a uh, donut type shape. Remember, that's what we did in the class. So, um, so five degrees should look okay. But let's just set it at two. This is my, my field. Again, I can call it something. So 3D field. And then I need to create it. So there's my field over there. It'll look like this. Okay, 
Now you need to uh, run your problem. But before doing so, you need to set certain configuration parameters. Here's the configuration parameters and the things you need to set is some, for example, the frequency over there. Now, what I like to do is declare variables in or, uh, that, that I use here. Then I can update my variables and all my configuration parameters updates correspondingly. So if I add to add a variable, you just you can right click here, you can say add variable, what is the name? I like to, this is the frequency that we, that we are going to use, what is the expression, that is now its value. So I'm going to set it equal to C0. Now, the, um, the, uh, no, wait a minute, I'm going to set it equal to three times uh, 3 to the power 8 uh, uh, Hertz created over there and then to set it here in the frequency uh, part you just double click on this and now I can specify that variable that I've declared here frequency and I just want to operate or want to analyze this problem at a single frequency so I click OK and then we see we're going to solve this problem at 300 megahertz okay Remember to save quite regularly, so I'm just going to save it here as Hertzian dipole, see if uh, a Hertzian dipole uh, in some directory. Save it. In my case, there was already something, so I'm going to override that model over there. So save regularly. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the solver run tab and we are going to launch here our FECO solver. Um, and then you should see a dialog box that looks like this. And it should just output the various steps, finishing in this word finish, then everything is okay. Uh, otherwise, FECO would report some warnings or errors. Okay, now we can. What we now do is we can um, launch post FECO. So from the launch or toolbar, we click post FECO. And then the post FECO component or utility will open. There we go. This is my Hertzian dipole now. This is where in post FECO is where I view my results. So the post processing part of FECO. Okay. Um, so this is my 3D grid. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select here on the far field my 3D field pattern and I'm going to use the mouse button to scroll out. There's my perfect donut shape. And I get about a 1.575 maximum gain here at the red. This is what we expect here at the circumference of this, um, uh, our radiation pattern, our maximum value of our radiation pattern. On the right here, I can also now request various other quantities. So if you click here on quantity you can also get the directivity um, in our case the directivity and the gain would be the same uh, the, the gain in this context I think rem refers to the power gain remember what is the difference between the power gain and the directivity pattern um, so uh, maybe go read up that a little bit to figure out why it's the same value okay and yeah you can also then if you just want to view the raw electric field, that's now not averaged uh, over the surface of a sphere, as was the case with directivity or gain patterns, you can also request this. Okay, um, so sometimes it's easier to view a Cartesian plane over there. So to do that, I create a new display at the top here, click on Cartesian, and then uh, I'm going to add my far field, which is this over there. Make sure this I have this trace showing here. And my independent axis, so my horizontal axis is theta. It goes from 0 to 180. And then I can vary my angle of phi. So to do that, I can use the up and down mouse buttons to step between the phi points. And as you can see, and as we expect, our uh, patterns are independent of, of phi. Ne? Remember, any plane on a constant phi, that is the e electric, uh, the e plane, the um, the pattern will look the same, uh, which is exactly what we see over there. And over here, we see our our gain value, or if you go to direct 
activity will be the same is about 1.5 and I think that's what we calculated in class isn't it that's the exact same value so um, yeah now you can save it this as well I typically like to uh, yeah, you can give it any name what else can we do is so you can click on the trace you can export to a dat file that you can use to read back into MATLAB and compare it with the patterns that you calculated there perhaps um, yeah okay so uh, that's a rich and for you uh, good luck and um, yeah be sure to to let me know if um, if you have any questions thank you